Hey everyone, Duke Nuka 3D here, wishing you all a merry chimbus and a happy who gives a fuck. But that's not the point of this video today. And it's not even going to be a review as per se, as some of you may be misled by the title. No, this is going to be a long and very uh, lengthy discussion on why I fucked up and why I'm subjugated to my own personal beliefs and how they have corrupted my opinion. As with most people in the gas mask community, we all have our personal senses of ideological principles and what we deem as a good mask based on personal aesthetics, and I'm no um, exception to this rule. I have sort of followed along the path of a specific set of research, which has sort of misled me into believing why I dislike the Millennium. In other words, I like specific features of specific masks, and therefore I have kind of had a jaded opinion on why the Millennium is bad, and the millennium, after looking into it, the Millennium is not actually as bad a mask as I originally thought, but for specific reasons. For instance, I would not choose a Millennium over an Avon FM53 or even a, uh, an FM12. Any modern CBRN-oriented protective mask is ultimately going to be better than the Millennium, but for a specific reason. The Millennium was not designed to compete with modern military CBRN protective masks. It was designed from the ground up as a law enforcement and pseudo-industrial mask, uh, and there are specific... Um, any, any flaws with the design are kind of inherently negligible or can be corrected through the user's maintenance. Uh, so, really, as kind of mentioned in the previous review of the Millennium, uh, it, it really is the best outcome of the MCU design platform. There are some specific features which I do not like with the design as mentioned before, but I will get into those in a moment and probably kind of estimate why MSA did it that way. So, going down the long list of complaints which I've uh, sort of talked about uh, and touched upon throughout the history of this channel, let's start with the most obvious, the lens. Everyone knows about the eyepiece of the Millennium having an inherent issue where it will discolor due to the cement used to hold on the urethane lens, and more, um, more notably, the lens will frost. Now, this is actually a, remedy, a remediable issue, if that's even a word, which I'm sure it isn't, um, but essentially, during the curing or molding process of this urethane lens, there is a wax um, that they use as a preservative to make sure that there's uh, no defects and it, the lens maintains perfect optical clarity while it's being bonded to the face piece. And over time, this wax in certain environments will seep to the surface and create a sort of white frosty uh, sort of layer on the on the lens. This is actually blooming. This is similar to the blooming that you'll get on most types of rubber. Uh, and that is, again, just excess curing agents mixing with preservatives and forming as a uh, or congealing on the surface as a waxy tacky sort of substance and this can be actually be removed the msa millennium manual states how you're supposed to remove this blooming on the lens and unfortunately the discoloration around the edges uh, cannot be removed although some people say you can uh, there is no specific way you're supposed to in the manual um, so i'm just going off of what i've read in the manual but Keep in mind that you can actually remove white frosting from the lens and make it perfect optical clarity again. Because like when I got this example off of Moulage, it was um, uh, it was pretty frosted. It was pretty bad looking, and it had several deep scratches all along it that I thought were actually you know scratches in the material itself, but were just the blooming getting a little bit marred from handling. So as you can see now, it's like perfect optical clarity, and uh, you may be able to look into the past Millennium review uh, that I did with Moulage when I was visiting him uh, earlier this month, and basically you can just tell the difference of how cleaner it is, and obviously of course you have some inherent yellowing, that's just going to always be an inherent problem with the design, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like the MCU platform, is just for that yellowing, um, however it does not really affect the uh, capability of vision, it just kind of makes things a little bit more piss colored, uh, to say the least. Um, another thing which I've mentioned, uh, there is a wide claim that I've kind of perpetuated that Millenniums will often be found uh, degraded straight out of the packaging. Like, they'll have dry cracking and dry rot, and I, I also touched base on this on my last Millennium re review, and there's also a purpose for that. So, um, you're, you're probably wondering, why didn't MSA just make the Millennium out of butyl? It would have been the easy option. You have a perfect CBRN protective mask, it's made out of butyl, everything's good and fine. The thing is, though, as I mentioned, this was not designed to be a standalone CBRN protective mask. This was designed with in mind to be sold to law enforcement agencies who are dealing with more than potentially just CBRN threats, but also 
possibly toxic industrial gases, which CBRN protective masks aren't really covered to protect against as much. And as such, that's why MSA chose the high car mixture. And one of the um, things they did because um, obviously with older high, uh, MSA masks made out of high car, like the uh, Ultra V here, where it's a very stiff, very unmalleable rubber, it's very uncomfortable to a certain degree if it doesn't, if you don't have the proper facial ergonomics to seal it well. Um, so what they did was they they changed the blend of their high car to be more softer, more flexible, and as such, there's an additive in this rubber, which as you can see, there's a bunch of streaking effects in the rubber, and that's due to this specific wax they add. Let um, me get the camera to focus here. Give me one moment, folks. Give me a f give me one second, folks. Um, I'll just keep talking. Uh, there's a specific wax they add to the rubber um, that keeps that allows it to not only be flexible, but it also protects allows the mask to be protected against uh, certain toxic industrial gases that most CBRN masks aren't as well suited to pr protect against. Although they can, this mask is more definitely designed with that in mind. So you will have effects where there is this streaking on the rubber and in some cases again if the camera will focus on this that would be great to sort of demonstrate what this is I'm trying to hold it as still as possible here um, but I don't know if you can see that on camera uh, you probably can't because it's blurry as hell there is um, let me get it focused on that I'll try to get it focused on the stamp here again I'm working with my phone camera I don't like using my GoPro I prefer this camera just because it focuses better let me try this there we go I can just tap on the screen Probably should have figured that out before. Anyways, you can see that there is sort of a dry cracking effect to the rubber, and this is actually not dry rot. Surprisingly, this is not dry rot. This is actually just the wax preservative um, embedded in the rubber that's sort of sort of uh, come, taking on this sort of flaky looking effect, but the rubber is not dry rotting. It's not being degraded. It's just a weird effect that this preservative has. So... So that sort of explains that issue. It's not that the masks are damaged. It's just it's a very weird rubber quality. And so that explains two of the myths with the Millennium. Um, other complaints that I have um, regard the internal oronasal cup, which I'll flip the head harness around because I can do that quickly without having to switch off the camera. So obviously the Millennium uses the standard MCU style nose cup, which most people will complain about, others will not. I know there are a lot of people who will come on my videos and say, but Duke, I fit the Millennium just fine. I fit the MCU, it's a comfortable nose cup. That may be true for you. First, me personally, I hate this nose cup design and a lot of other people contest with it. It's a very short, stout, and very stiff design which presses harshly into the bridge of my nose and it's way too, far recessed back and way too squat and it doesn't come very high up onto the bridge of my nose and I really ought to seal a large and I know I know you can get replacement nose cups on Amazon but they cost as much as a brand new mask at times not from the MSRP they, like the spare nose cups cost between 70 and 80 dollars and I haven't found any surplus retailer selling the nose cups so that's kind of a a moot point but however um the nose cups the only reason MSA went with these nose cups um uh, and not uh the M the M40 A1 style nose cups is because as far as I know, MSA never really had the rights to produce the M40 because basically when Scott Aviation sold off the contracts to the M40 series masks, it sold um, probably first to MSA, but the rights to manufacture them, I believe, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not entirely sure on this, were sold to Scott Aviation. Uh, so Scott Aviation had the rights to produce the M40, uh, while MSA was only allowed to produce it as a military contractor, and they didn't have the actual production rights to the M40 design. And obviously, uh, probably around the time the Millennium was being developed, uh, Scott Aviation, or excuse me, ILC Dover, I said, I kept saying uh, Scott Aviation when I meant to say ILC Dover, so... Just to clarify, ILC Dover had probably had the um, production rights to the M40 series, and so they sold them off to 3M, and so obviously being a harshly competing company, MSA did not have the rights to use the A1 style nose cup, while 3M had the FR M40, which is just a rebranded M40 A1. So as such, uh, that, that sort of explains why MSA continued to use this older archaic nose cup design that... Uh, the U.S. Army ultimately rejected for the A1 style nose cup, and it's which it's been unfortunate. But on the plus side, it is possible to replace these nose cups with those of an M40 A1. I'm not suggesting you do that, and I totally abhor anyone who will try to buy up M40 A1s just to disassemble them for the nose cups for their Millenniums. But just keep in mind that if you have a M40 A1 that you can disassemble and a Millennium that you can disassemble, you can swap out the nose cups and it is, oh, oh my god, it, it just makes the mask a hell of a lot better having an A1 nose cup in this thing. It just like, I would almost use this mask 
over like an M45. I wouldn't say that because I like the M45 way more on several other bases, but just on a comfort level, it's way more comfortable with an A1 nose cup. Um, that's really all I have to say regarding the um, complaints that I've kind of upheld on this channel in the past. Uh, I'll try and... Uh, the kind of the reason stemming from this is because uh, I, again, I don't really focus on industrial masks, especially modern ones. There is like a whole argument thread on my Chinese bootleg 3M clone where this one dipshit was coming on and it's like, oh, you didn't compare it to anything. You say you don't know things. And it's like, dude, I just, I was given that mask for free. It's not my area of research. The dude just gave me a mask for free and told me to review it. I'll review it. I, I'm not saying it's going to be good, and if you're so confident that I'm wrong, make your own video or fucking correct me. Fight me. Anyways, so obviously, there are specific fields of masks which I do not research. I mostly focus on American military protective masks from the World War I up until the end of the Cold War, which pretty much just stops at the M45 for me. I don't really study the 50 series or anything modern. Uh, that's mostly, um, I have other people for that if I need info. But again, modern industrials, not my field of research. And I, there's a lot that I don't know. I know more about um, the sort of, um, the details about CBRN protection over industrial protection. I'll know some basics, but I won't have everything down pat. And just the way I am, I'll be thinking around a military development standpoint and not from the perspective of a industrial safety company. So my view may be flawed on several industrial masks because I'm, again, I'm thinking like a military engineer and not a safety company. Um, other, other things to note on that regard is that um, I know a lot of people have requested that I wear masks in my video and that I test masks. Unfortunately, that's not really an effective way to do this. I know a lot of YouTubers will test masks, but that proves nothing. It doesn't prove whether the mask will work for you or whether it's a good mask for you. It proves that that mask is good for that person and works for that specific person. When buying a protective mask, you have to make your own educated decisions on what you think is a good design. And you can't just go onto r slash gas mask and ask if this mask is safe or if it'll protect you or if it's a good mask or what mask should I buy, you have to kind of make those decisions yourself. And I, I've been saying this forever, but nobody listens because everyone likes the spectacle and not the speculation. Um, but yeah, that's really why I don't review masks by testing them or wearing them because it proves nothing to the end user. I'm analyzing them from a mechanical physiological standpoint and not a sort of, oh, I can wear this mask, you should wear it too, sort of deal. So apologies if that's what you kind of came to my channel to see. That's not really who I am. You you can have, uh, and again, I've, I've been doing business with weapons and stuff, 93. You can check out his channel if you want to see more videos like that, if, if that's the sort of thing you like. That's just not what I do personally. So sorry to disappoint, that's just me. Um, before I ramble on any further and probably piss off more people who are almost definitely going to start disliking this video because I hurt their feelings or something, it's like, dude, I'm just a guy on the internet that reviews rubber masks. Get off your fucking high horse. Um, but anywho, <laughs> that being said, uh, that's about all I have to say. I'm Duke at 3D. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns relating to the video, mind you, I get a lot of comments and questions on general things which aren't related, and I don't really appreciate that, but whatever. If you, you fucks want to treat my comments like an open forum, go ahead. It's not like I'll probably respond to them anyways. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself again. See y'all later.